Both teams about equal, Warren. Wilkes-Barre had a rough time early in the season. They had a lot of people missing. Actually picked to be district champs up there, and now they're in the Eastern Conference. Well, yeah, you look at the beginning of the season, they lost three games in a row. They won a game, then they lost another game. That was it. They won the rest of them. And I think the major problem they had there was uh, the Graffin Reed, of course, uh, the tailback was out for those three games, and also the quarterback. They had trouble bringing the quarterback, Janusky, online for those games, and uh, the early season injuries really played a big part in, in, in making a mess out of their season. As you can see, as the captains meet at the center of the field, the field has been cleared of all the snow that we had, but it has left a little bit of muck in the middle of the silver ball. Well, Although better than you anticipated, Warren. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's as good as you can expect it to be. I mean, a plow was on this field two days ago. I mean, you had uh, six, seven inches of snow sitting on a wet snow sitting on it. It had, it had gone an entire season of, of high school and midget football being played. This wasn't in the greatest shape to start off with. So, yeah, you, you look at the field now and you have to say it's probably in as good a condition as it can be in. Now, you know, you're playing an Eastern Conference uh, two-way championship game tonight. And three days later, a district playoff game right. has been announced, will be played on this field. So I think well, I'd yeah. worry more about poor Southern Columbia area and this field than I would about us because it's going to be a little bit more well, chewed up. Now, they're rolling it, I understand. They rolled it before this game, right. and they'll roll it again. Before the Friday to, night contest. Out, you're so. watching this Wednesday night. So Friday night, come down, see Southern Area Tigers here play Susquehanna. No, they're playing Columbia. Columbia. The Columbia Crimson Sorry, Tide. Sorry, I thought it was Susquehanna. Columbia okay. Crimson Tide. Oh, okay. I, just, I was over talking about Phil. Thank you. He knows all. I had that one wrong. <laughs> Phil opened his magical book, and he told me everything. This is the 22nd playoff game for a Red Tornado team. That's oh, yeah? a pretty neat thing to know. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, the, the, their, their record in there is... Uh, uh, 12 wins and nine losses right now. So That's we have a, a good record in championship playoff games. That It, it includes like, uh, I think, I don't have this totally right, but six Eastern Conference championship games, 15 Eastern Conference games uh, I I included in that, and then I think seven district and state games. So it's something broken <laughs> down like that, but uh, uh, good for the Red Tornadoes to, to have this game. And in particular, probably, a good for some of these guys uh, that are coming up, the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, to get a feel of a championship game. Well, I mean, that's, that's exactly what, you're, what is right. You got two extra games, you got championship playoff kind of atmosphere out there. Plus, and, and it's important to note here, you're playing a high quality football team. Oh. This football team was picked to, to do everything this year. It's only because of early season injuries. And I, I'll add that everybody is back. This team is at 100%. If you watched them last week, you know why they're a dangerous football team. Kicking off for the GAR Grenadiers, number 33, Harold Jackson. And Harold is known up in the Wilkes-Barre area just as Big Harold. Okay. <laughs> Big Harold. <laughs> That's it, Big Harold. And of course, uh, we had met uh, Wilkes-Barre, Garfield, and Roosevelt one other time, I understand, which we'll get to in a minute, in a minute here. So Harold will kick off for the Grenadiers. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, 27 Dave Evans, 22 Brett Veach, and 29 Malakoski. This one's coming at Veach, takes it on about the 21-yard line, takes it around the left side, finds some running room out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. First down, Red Tornadoes from the 34-yard line. I make reference to Garfield and Roosevelt, to our missing companion, of course, Mr. Brokenshire, not with us tonight. He's in <coughs> Bosnia-Herzegovina. For those of you who don't know, he was sent in there. Of course, you know the problems with the peace thing. I thought it was going to be related to, of course, United States efforts to solve that ugly incident over there. But really, there was a baker strike, and he was called in to mediate. So he'll be in Bosnia probably over the holiday weekend. Vic Karnaski, number six, the junior quarterback, sets up for the Red Tornadoes. Hands off to Veach, off the left side, finds a little running room, gain of about two or three yards behind the blocking of Costello and the line of the Red Tornadoes. Number 76, Mike Boyer, 61 at left guard, Jamie Rowland. 74, the center, John Fedock. The right guard, number 58, Ron Davis. The right tackle, number 68, Brian Lepotsky. At the ends tonight, 83, Eric Higgins or Corey Hepler, 31. And number 30, Sean Jamin. Also in there will be number five, Jason Gunther, or 29, which is Malakoski. Karnaski back to pass. Good blocking from the Red Tornado line. Looks downfield. Hits Jamin at the 48-yard line. Drops the ball. Incomplete pass. Third down and about eight yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. Good blocking that time by the Red Tornado line. And if that's a sign of what's to come, they can let Vic do a little bit of throwing tonight. Now, it's, it's an interesting matchup here. 
Uh, this is this Grenadier football team. Of course, they're the Grand Army of the Republic, as I stated last week, not Garfield and Roosevelt before we get arrested here. But uh, they match up size-wise and speed-wise almost exactly to us. You're going to see a, an offense, a, a tailback, probably the fastest guy in the game tonight, I would say. Karnaski back to pass again. Looks on a fly to each incomplete over his head. That time uh, defended number 31, Joe Janik. So fourth down for the Red Tornadoes in a punting situation. A lot of people open on that play, though, Warren. And if, uh, if, if Red Tornadoes are watching that, there, there's a lot of things can be done out of that pass play tonight. Uh, there, we're passing to the sidelines there, and that's probably your best bet. It, the footing is probably the best, I would say, about 20 yards in off each sideline. Right. Once you get to the middles, when you really get into the problems. Costello in punt formation. Booms a nice one, goes by the receiver number 10 from Wilkesbury GAR, which is Tony Falcone, and the Grenadiers will take over first down and 10 from about the 21-yard line. Now you'll see what's what's regarded up north as a high-octane, high-power offense. A lot of the, the option being run here, uh, a little bit different than we've used to be seeing probably throughout the year as far as offensive strategy goes. And watch the tailback. Number 20, Manuel de Graffenried. He's the guy. He's the key to this football game, along with Janusky, the quarterback. Right. They're the two guys that you've got to stop if you're going to win the football game. Number 20, Manny de Graffenried comes from the split formation. Big Harold Jackson at the fullback spot. This is the option coming down the line with the quarterback. Makes a nice run, number four, Alex Janoski. And tackle made by number 31, Corey Hepler, but after about a four or five yard gain. And you saw that as the quarterback comes down the line, he's looking to pitch or either pick his hole, Warren. Now, I, I watched these guys last week on TV a little bit, and I mean, maybe it was just because who they were playing or whatever, but it struck me that the quarterback carries the ball a lot more in this option than in most options. He doesn't uh, pitch the ball that often. Janoski sets the great ears. Big Harold Jackson up the middle. Anderson with the initial hit in there, and he held everything up so that the rest of the Red Tornadoes could get in on the tackle. Corey Hepler in there, Anderson, Chicatano, and 41, Joe Costello. That one doesn't go anywhere, and it'll be third down and five. Now, we were told the weather is, is getting different than it was during the day. It's chillier now with the wind starting to pick up, and also we're expecting some snow uh, yeah, in the uh, latter half of the not game. Not much of an us. accumulation coming, but it could be a, a, a nuisance snow here on the uh, field. We got someone lined up offside, and uh, we'll see who it is as the ref runs onto the field and, and checks this one out. This one's going to go against the Grenadiers, a five-yard penalty. It'll be offsides, Grenadiers. What does Big Harold on, have on his helmet? Is that one of those tinted shields, or why, why don't I? I can't look at his, at his helmet like that. Yep, he does. <laughs> I didn't need binoculars either. I want you to know that. You had it without binoculars. I, yeah, just, big... no, I just couldn't tell what it was, though. I, <laughs> you don't see many helmets like that. There, there's another one out there, too, somewhere, isn't there? Well, we picked up Big Harold's. Yeah. I don't know how good that is at night. Third down and 11. Janoski back to pass. Looks on the fade. Big rush by Hepler. Now he just lets it fly. And incomplete as number 10 slips down on the field, Tony Falcone. So good hold by the Red Tornado defense. Fourth down for the GAR Grenadiers. Now, their first passing effort was not pretty. No. I don't know. I don't know how, how they are as a passing I think team. the big uh, rush from Hepler had a lot to do with that. And we have flags on the play. Mike. I think that'll be an uh, 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 what's it called when they it's called ineligible. Too many people on the field is what it's going to be. It's an it's illegal uh, participation. Right. Actually, it's an illegal substitution is what it is by leaving him out there. But you know, give it an on sportsmanlike conduct call. But it actually came from over on the GAR side. No, line. no, 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 no. He called that on their coach. Did he? Yes, he did. OK. That, the guy, the, the referee that lined up over there was standing right yeah, in front of those two guys out, were right. yelling. He called an unsportsmanlike conduct on the bench, I believe. Okay. Because the illegal participation call isn't that. No, I It's I a different call. Okay. 
Somebody over there said a bad, 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 bad thing. Mm, somebody was bad mouthing. Well, this is great for the Red Tornadoes because it'll put a, a punt out of the end zone for GAR, number four in there to punt Janoski, the quarterback, mm. high snap. He does a nice job of getting it. This punt's gonna be fielded by Malakoski on the 41 yard line, breaks it around the right side. Find some running room to the 29 and his drug. No, he's, he's still, still on his feet. Malakoski fumbled, fumbled on the, the ball. Play, we got it. But recovered it. by the Red Tornadoes and a great run by Dan Malakoski. Oh, Dan the man. Just shows you what that man, that kid can do. What a great run. Fumbled the ball, but only after extraordinary extra effort to get to get those last couple of yards, and we recovered it. But great run back by uh, Malakoski. He has come on so strong Boy, in the latter half of the season. They had him dead in his season. tracks at the 24-yard line. He was dead in his tracks, got away from him, and got down to about the 14-yard line. First down and 10 red tornadoes. 9-0-1 left in the first quarter of this Eastern Conference Championship game. Power backfield for the red tornadoes with Hepler, Costello, and Veach at the tailback. To Veach off the right side, finds a little running room and a now nice hole down to about the seven yard line. Good block that time by number 58, the right guard, Ron Davis. Say Davis, Davis sprung the play that time. There was good line play along the line, but Davis was a key that time. And so far, I mean, it's early in the football game. There's still 8.35 remaining in the first quarter, but so far we seem to be controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Second down and six yards to go. Veach off the left side, big block that time, touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Nobody touched Brad Veach. No, Great they, job they sealed by the left time. side of the Red Tornado line. Yeah, completely sealed it off. All he had to do was get a, hit, a, a block right at the beginning, right at the line of scrimmage. And once he had the block, there was nobody there. Boyer rolling and Fedok over there. Good job by the Red Tornadoes. In to attempt the extra point, number 31, Corey Hepler. Gretzky will hold, Joe Shikitano with the snap. It's back, it's down, great snap, kicks up, and it's good. With 8.18 remaining in the first quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes, seven, the GAR Grenadiers, zero. The potential of this Red Tornado team this year was awesome. Oh, absolutely. There were three tough games yeah. against three quality football teams, and, uh, and we lost them, and, and and there's nothing more you can say. But the potential was here, uh, and they did a great job as far as they went with it. And uh, be nice to finish off this year with an Eastern Conference championship. Well, we're well on our way right now with a seven-point lead. Again, I said we look like we're doing pretty well on the line of scrimmage. The, the key to the game, though, is the graph and read. I think. Right. He's so quick. He can he break the line. Time. He's gone. You know, he's such a threat from any place on the field that. You're going to be on pins and needles with him until, you know, the final gun sounds tonight. Kicking off for the Red Tornadoes, number 42, Mike Sinkovich. And if you check, GR sort of knows where Mike has been kicking this ball, and they have Big Harold, Big Harold Jackson right on the 20-yard line, about where Sinkovich's ball usually goes. He does a squib kick. Going to be taken by the short man. Oh, great tackle made. Number eight had the ball, to Thea de and Reed, but a great tackle made by number 47, Steve Sinko or Mike Steve Sinkovich. A Thea. A th he is a Thea. A Thea. A Thea. I, ne I never heard yep, that one before. I'm sorry, but it's it a new one. Yep, I got it. Hey, I was ready for All the right. Eastern Conference Championship game. I'm impressed with a <laughs> Thea voice. Somebody threw a, a Thea in, and you were okay on her. First down and 10 for the Grenadiers from the 32-yard line. We also don't know if we're saying it right either. <laughs> Close. <laughs> it could be anything, you know. Janowski, a big hair. No, he's got the ball. Good fake that time, but a nice read from the uh, cornerback over there, which is number 29, Dan Malakoski. Good job by Malakoski. Stayed in position and made a great tackle. This is this is an interesting, you know, you, you go, you're in your 12th game now. You play 11 games and you see almost no option. Nobody this year ran right. an option well anyway. This is a team that lives and dies on an option. So you got the, you have the defense and offense now in the, in the last game of the, of the year. You have to have a completely different defense to try to stop these guys. Janoski, this, oh, big hits by the Red Tornadoes. Higgins in, rolling in, Corey Hepler in, and Bill Anderson also there. Good job by the Red Tornadoes that time, and Manny DeGraffenried goes nowhere. 
once again, offensively we look pretty solid, or defensively we look pretty solid. Again, you know, they're going to run this option 99% of the time. You're going to see some version right. of the option. So you got three different people that can handle a ball in any given play in a lot of different directions we can go in. So the pressure on the defense will, will remain that way all through all four quarters tonight. Janoski back to pass, slips a little, big rush from the Red Tornadoes. Hepler in on the tackle, intercepted by numbers. I didn't see who got it. 29, Dan Malakoski. All right, Dan. The junior is making a statement tonight. Well, he Great went up, job by Malakoski. He went up high for that baby. That was an excellent interception. And, and on the other side of it, it was a very poor decision to pass right, the ball. Right. He was under extreme pressure. He was backing up. And he was on one foot and he let the ball wing and that's what happens when you do that big rush from the red tornado line that time kanaski pitches back to veach finds some running room gain of about five yards flag on the play and that's usually where there's a hold that's going to hurt us that'll come back Holding called against the Red Tornadoes, and this one will come back. 6-13 left in the first of this Eastern Conference Championship game. The Red Tornadoes up 7-0. Little bit of snow falling right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. They were, they were right. It was going to come, and here it comes. Uh, again, they don't expect a lot, but it'll just make things a little bit more miserable than they already are tonight. <laughs> Beach and Costello in the backfield. First down and 20 for the Red Tornadoes. Karnaski fakes. Back to pass. Lots of time. Looks over at Gunther. Hits him for about a nine-yard gain down to about the 29-yard line. Second down and 11 for the Red Tornadoes. And I'll tell you where that play was born at. On the first series when they stopped us, and you said so many people were open. Right. Gunther ran back to, to uh, Vic when they were coming off the field and was pointing and said to him, you know, I can beat this guy where I'm open. Whatever he said to him, you know, either they're not covering this pass the way we're used to it or whatever. And he said, you know, he's saying to him, throw it to me. And there you saw it. It was a, a, a big gain that time. Evans and Jamin split far right for the Red Tornadoes. Again, a pass play, but it's a draw to Veach. Gains of about five yards. Tackle made by number 62 in there for the Grenadiers, Jim Costello. Another Costello on both sides of the line. Yeah, there's a big difference. <laughs> one's cast, man, and one's just a Costello. <laughs> 5.30 left in the first quarter. I'm sorry. <laughs> One shouldn't be carrying the other one's cleats. That's the way this works. One's an all-state candidate. My man. Third down and about seven yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. Gunther and Evans now split to the right. Trip formation with also Veach in there. Looks to the right side of Gunther. He catches it and he's inbounds, but he, he dropped I think he dropped the ball. He kept one foot inbounds. He did a great job of staying there and keeping one foot inbounds. That was a heck of a heave, too. That was a great pass that time. What he was doing was he was concentrating so much on staying inbounds, and he was right on the edge. Hey, when the rifle lets it rip, believe me, it's there. Jamin into the ball game now for the Red Tornadoes. He brings the play, and they're going to go for it on fourth down and eight with the ball resting on about the 25-yard line. This game has been all played in Grenadier territory. Kanaski back to pass. It's going to be Green. a screen. They read it. They oh, read they it. read it very well. They knew that one was coming. They were ready for that one. Yeah, that was... Good play made by the Grenadiers, so they'll take over. First down and 10 from the 25. That was a big defensive possession, Warren, for the Grenadiers in that, you know, that was the chance, the opportunity for Mount Carmel to really start going at this thing, and yeah. uh, now it's still only 7-0. Yeah, you're right. That was a tough play. I mean, I, he, I, I was hoping Vic would have seen that. They were, you know, they were reading it perfectly. Even the rush didn't come. They actually, yeah, they they actually even back. held the line up thinking maybe it would be a center screen. First down and 10 for the Grenadiers. Janoski this time tries 
to Jackson, and he is just put down. He is put down by number what. 77, Bill Anderson. Hey, big win in the neighborhood. <laughs> the neighborhood wasn't happy. Big got left out of the neighborhood. They might call him big, but he's not that big in the neighborhood. <laughs> Four thirty-three left in the first. Second down and ten for the Grenadiers. Janoski still with the ball. Looks over in the flat. Intercepted by number eight Gretzky. And two passes now. Three passes thrown by the Grenadiers. Two have been completed to the Red Tornadoes. Gretzky with that interception. Good job by the senior. Now, first of all, Janoski is not making good decisions out there. He, now I, I, I don't want to take away from him a little bit in that he's under extreme pressure, but he's either going to make a decision to run, or or take the sack, or whatever he decides he wants to do. That time his outlet pass was covered. Right. Higgins was just standing next to his, he, so he had no outlet pass. And at that point is when he should have decided either I run or, or I let it, you know, take the sack. Veach breaks it back up the middle. Good tackle made that time by number 68. On the tackle, 69, <laughs> Dan Hines. Yeah, that wasn't the, the two passes were ill-advised, both of them. I said he's under extreme pressure. And, if they're going to pass the ball tonight, they're going to have to do a heck of a lot better job with pass protection than they are right now because it's a sieve out there. He hasn't even set up yet, and he's already avoiding somebody, so it's, it doesn't bode well to pass like that. Gain of about three yards that time for the Red Tornadoes. This one's to Costello up the middle. That time a good job done by number 69, Hines, and also number 62, Jim Costello. Hines in there has got a set of the shortest legs they may have seen, yeah, except, for, except for Harris. Two of those guys together could have a, a, a competition for the shortest legs. <laughs> Third down and eight yards to go. Third down and seven yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. The ball on the 32-yard line. Kanaski fakes play action. Back to pass. Big rush. Gets around it, looks downfield. Good job by Karnaski to read it to Evans. Down to the 11-yard line. First down, Red Tornadoes. Great job that time by Evans to catch the ball because he slept. Oh, yeah. But another great job by Karnaski. Yeah, and great line the walking. The junior is really coming on. You can see he took his time, Warren. He wasn't hassled by the rush coming and got around. And somebody picked up the block. Veach. Veach, okay. Veach made a fantastic block. Veach did a block. great job on the blitzing linebacker, number 31, Joe Janik. Yeah, I, th I think Janik thought he was going to run right over Veach, and he did. Veach nailed him, and that was it. And uh, Vic was able to pop outside, and that gave him the room to, to throw. First down and 10 red tornadoes from the 11-yard line. This one's going to Veach, but we have flags on the play. It's a dead ball foul. A legal procedure called against the red tornadoes, so somebody moved somewhere. I didn't really see it from my vantage point here. These penalties are killers, though. Yeah, when, it, so when it's on first down, and we, this is the second one now, on first down uh, that gave us a first and 20 down close, and now we have a first and 15 down close. 216 left in the first quarter. Kanaski with Evans split to the right. He comes in motion, pitch back to Veach. And Veach down to about the eight yard line. Good block that time by number 27, Dave Evans. <laughs> and Dave apparently had to explain it to that guy too. On the <laughs> <way back. laughs> apparently that guy had asked a question of Dave and Dave had to tell him what he was doing there. Second down and about eight yards to go for the Red Tornadoes, the ball on the eight yard line. So they can get a first down, but it's real close to the goal line for a first down. I say the heck with the first down, let's just score and be done with it. Karnaski with Veach and Costello. And this one should be offsides against the Grenadiers. I did not see a Red Tornado move that time. No, that'll be the Grenadiers.
It's a dead ball foul. Offside, Grenadiers. Half the distance of the goal will move it to about the three-yard line. Four-yard line. I was close. <laughs> Only a yard off. Second down and four. Power backfield with Hepler, Costello, and Veach. This is the Veach. Away from the power. Touchdown, and the Grenadiers all went to Hepler's side. Touchdown. Red Tornadoes at the 109 mark of the first quarter. Man, the Grenadiers are hurting up front, guys. They're being demolished on the, on the line of scrimmage. It's as simple as that. That, again, that time the formation won that one because everybody right. shifted. They, they shifted to the strong side of the formation, which was Hepler's side, and we ran the opposite direction, and Hepler played no part in it, which was a decoy right. of the formation. But as far as those two guys on the left, uh, what would be the right defensive people for, the, for GER, they're going to be in for a long evening, I think. Hepler in for the extra point. It's up, and it's good. Good snap by number 66, Joe Shikitano, and a great hold by number eight, Nick Goretzky. With 109 left in the first quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes 14, the Grenadiers zero. Uh, Big Red looks like they're, they're fired up and playing some football tonight. The Grenadiers are going to have to get in action soonest, or they're going to be marching home with a pretty good beating on their shoulders. Yeah, yeah they're, they're definitely not playing well right now. Offensively, they're showing us nothing, uh, and that is attributable to the defense of Big Red right now. And the bottom line is a District 2 team. This team handled Wilkes-Barre Myers last week? Was, yeah, right. right. And, and uh, or, or not last week, but in that game that was on TV, that YOU game that was yeah, on Saturday TV. Yeah, Saturday game, yeah. So the bottom line is this is a District 4 team that's, that's going to, if, if this continues, put it to a District 2 team, and they don't like to see that up in Wilkes-Barre area. Onside kick, bouncing around. Red Tornado's in, and... We'll who, see who has it. I don't it. know who got that. Well, it, it went the right distance. It went 10 yards. Yeah, it's going to be give me GAR. Okay. Ball recovered by the Grenadiers, but a good kick, a good smart kick because it nearly worked. The problem with it is you give such a good field position right. that it doesn't work. Right. Best field position of the evening for the Grenadiers, I would say, you know, we're winding down in the first quarter, but this might be the drive they're going to have to display something offensively or, you know, pretty much this will be the end of the game for them, I think. They're just really not showing much on the offensive. And it's the line play that's killing them right now. Right now, number 54, Jeff Evans comes in at the nose guard position. They're going to come. Oh, big hit by Anderson on number 20, Manny DeGraffenreid. Well, it was Manny's time to be in the neighborhood. Nobody blocking Mr. Anderson on that play. They just left Bill open. The neighborhood's an ugly place to visit these days. <laughs> Second down and nine yards to go. They'll give them a one-yard pickup. I think the neighborhood went from the suburbs to the inner city. <laughs> it's a dangerous place to be right now. In the I formation right now, Jackson at fullback to Graffenreed at the tail. Janoski. To Jackson, tries off the right side. Hepler that time on the tackle, going nowhere. You see, that time I thought he should have kept it. Definitely looked that way. Jamin also down on the bottom of the pile. And that's the end of the first quarter. The score, the Red Tornadoes 14, the Wilkes-Barre GAR Grenadiers nothing. Talk yeah. a little bit, Warren, about some special guys here tonight. There's a list of them, and we'll start by their numbers, number five, Jason Gunther, number eight, Nick Gretzky, number 26, Pete Cheddar, 28, Denny Molosevich, 31, Corey Hepler, 58, Ronnie Davis, 68, whoops, 61, Jamie Rowland, 68, Brian Lepotsky, 74, John Fedock, and 77, Bill Anderson, and they are the seniors of the Red Tornadoes. Their, their final game in the red and white, the final game here at the stadium. Neat to play your final senior game for an Eastern Conference championship on the Silver Bowl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this has got to be special for all of them, and, and many of them, four-year people again. You know, this program is now developed into a four-year program. You see a player come in in his freshman year a lot of the time. If not his freshman, certainly his sophomore year, and you see him right on through playing in every game in every different situation. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a good system. A lot of people see playing time. A lot of people get their letters, and a lot of people then the next year are ready to go. And, and, and these people here you're seeing here gave their heart all the years they've been here, and, and we salute them. We really do. It was, it was great. It was a state championship for, with some of them. 
you know, well, all of them that were here then, and uh, a lot of other thrills throughout the three and four years they were here. Jackson, Janoski with the pitch. This time a little running room for DeGraff and Rita, knocked out of bounds and into the snow pile. Uh, can't, I guess Joe Costello was the initial one that hit him. That's Gain of about eight yards, though, and that showed the speed on the pitch. Yeah, that's the first time they, they were able to get outside. And, and again, he is the most dangerous football player on the field. I mean, his raw speed makes him the most dangerous player. If he breaks away from me on the outside, he's going to score a touchdown. Well, fourth down and one, and the Grenadiers are going to go for this. Coach Conley has his defensive signal called. This is the kind of play you got to be careful with, though. If he penetrates the line, he's gone. Going to try to graph and read up the middle. First down, Grenadiers at about the 44-yard line, but a good job by the Red Tornadoes that time. Uh, Jeff Evans, number 54, and 66, Joe Chicatano. And Chicatano, well, what a great job at linebacker. I mean, lots of talk about Costello this year, and Joey Costello is Joey Costello. But Chicatano at the other linebacker spot, just a great job this year for the oh, junior. He, he had two a juniors, year. Two both juniors. back next year, right. Yeah, that's the scary part if you're on the schedule next year is both of these guys are going to come back and haunt you for <laughs> another <laughs> anywhere from 10 to 15 games. Manny DeGraffenried, the lone back for the Grenadiers. Janoski fakes the handoff to him. Oh, read nicely by Higgins, oh, but then but Bill the Anderson finishes him off for a five-yard loss at the 49-yard line. And good job that time by Higgins to hold him up and then time for Anderson. And, boy, if the Grenadiers don't figure out a way of blocking Bill Anderson on this defense, they're in big trouble tonight. See, the problem, the problem defensively, I think, for them to block this defense is that the ends are coming in, but the tackles are controlling the line. And once you control that corner like they are, you're, you're, taking, you're taking everything away. You're taking that pitch and you're taking his movement inside. So you're not able to really run a true option as long as those two tackles control. Janoski back to pass. Evans with the rush. Hits him. Tipped by Joe Costello and almost the third interception. But a great job by the freshman, number 54, Jeff Evans. This is not going to be a highlight film for either the offensive line or Janoski tonight. And I'll tell you, they, they are not playing well offensively at all right now as far as passing game goes. Jamie rolling in at the nose position now, and Jeff Evans comes out. Jeff comes out. They keep him in there sort of like in passing situations usually, but now uh, uh, they're going to talk to him a little bit on the sideline and, and rolling back in. Eye formation for the Grenadiers. Janoski. Draw play to DeGraffenried. Oh, Hepler. Corey Hepler with the tackle, helped out by Jamin, and then finished off by Costello. Good job by the Red Tornado defense that time, and what an inspired defense. Again, the, the, the line is just overpowering the, the Grenadiers right now. Offensively, they are, they are mired in as much mud as they're standing in now. Punt formation for the Grenadiers, number four in there in punt formation, which is uh, Alex Janoski. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, 27 Evans and 29 Malakoski. Red Tornadoes setting up on a return, and that was a lousy kick, so this one will be downed on about the 19-yard line. First down, Red Tornadoes from the 19. That, was, that had to be disheartening for the Grenadiers in that they had such great field position. They got a first down finally. Looked like they were rolling, and they spent the next three downs going backwards. Again, their passing game, if they don't get their passing game, and an option team, any option team, is not necessarily noted as a passing team. The formation doesn't lend itself well to passing. Plus, usually the quarterback isn't that great of a passer. He's a better runner. So in this case, you know, they have two whammies against them. One, they're not that great of a passing team to start off, and then they're not doing anything on their own, you know, against his defense. Costello, the ball carrier, down the right side, and that one... The good coverage, good defense that time by the Grenadiers just to stay and work down the line and, and make the tackle. Gunther into the lineup for the Red Tornadoes now. Second down and 11. That was a loss of one yard. Kanaski to Veach, coming off the left side. 
Finds a little running room, turns it on, and is tackled at about the 26-yard line. Tackle made that time by number 45 from the Grenadiers, Bob Wickheiser. Nice run that time. That, he just got the, the corner that time. We had one guy to beat, and he would have scored a touchdown. Every play that's working for the Red Tornadoes right now is a misdirection. Brett made the first move to the right <clears throat> and then brought it back to the left, Warren. Now, now the right side of the defensive formation for the Grenadiers is, is so far the sore spot. They've been getting hit in every different way you can think of, and right now they're being overpowered on their right side. Third down and three yards to go. Flags on the play. That's going to hurt. And that was a... Well, it was a let-up play, so you can't really say if it was going to go or not. The Grenadiers had left up and, and not really put any pressure on. It is a dead ball foul, and here comes the official to call it. You know, that Illegal that procedure against the Red Tornadoes. Takes you out of a running game and into a passing situation. Now it'll be, uh, I'll set, it'll be second. Is it third or second now? Which will go? Where's the sticks? Third. Third. Okay, so it's a third and about eight. Eight. They're saying three right. on the scoreboard, but Third it's got to be eight. Passing situation for the Red Tornadoes. Karnaski, quick drop back, throws on the fade to Jamin. Oh, blocked. A nice play made by number 45, Bob Wickheiser, but the pass was there. It was a good, good throw by Karnaski. He had to take it off and just lay it up there for Jamin to catch. Fourth down, and that'll put number 41, Joe Costello, in punt formation. And that's where that's where the penalty hurts you. You not only do, you don't get a first down, you don't advance, but now you're punting from down on your eight yard line, and that's that's where the killer of it comes. Snaps back. End over end kick, <laughs> and he's nailed by number 28, Denny Molasevich. Molasevich does a great job of tackling number 10, Tony Falcone. It's probably one of the three toughest spots on the field to move on is right there. There are three bad spots probably out there on this field. One is down along the 20-yard line, and the others are right here, one on either side of the 50. Again, fairly good field position for the Grenadiers. Uh, seven minutes and 45 seconds remain in the, in the second quarter. I'm sure they, they are desperately hoping to get some offense going here to now. Janoski. Takes the ball himself, fakes to Jackson, and then carries it off the left side and gains about four yards, again on the tackle, number 77, Anderson. Janoski does a great job of faking it, though. You can't really tell whether or not he has handed the ball off. And Jackson, again, too, he bends over and makes it look yeah. like he's coming through the line. So you have to play positional football on defense here because you're not really positive who has the ball. Well, the fullback has to make a good fake for the, for the option to, to work. I mean, he's, the, he's one of the guys being handed the ball off to. Fake it up the middle to Graffenreid. Looks over the middle. Hits Falcone for a first down to about the 34-yard line. First down, Grenadiers. Good job that time. A nice play action. Fake to uh, to Graffenreid coming through the line and uh, uh, completed pass. Their first. That's their first completed right. pass of the evening. Well, he completed two more, two other ones, well, but they were to the wrong color. Well, you know, if you're allowed to count them or not, I'm not sure. 6.40 left in the first half. 14 to nothing. The Red Tornado's in the lead. Jackson and DeGraff and Reed in the I formation. Wickweiser in motion, now goes to the right. That ball was handled by Janoski, faked to Jackson and kept the ball himself and gains about four yards. Again, Anderson at the bottom of the pile. Costello also helping out there. Eighty-five is sour wine, and I said Wickweiser. Close. Yeah. Jackson, the ball carrier. Now Janoski keeps it. Hit by Evans, but close to a, it will be a first down at the 19 yard line, and that's how the option works. That's how it goes. It's, it's a dangerous formation. And again, now they're turning the corner. As soon as you get outside the corner, the option goes. They're now starting to control on that one side of the field. Well, the amazing thing is too, Warren, I had the glasses on. He actually had it in Jackson's stomach. He had it that it looked like he had handed it off, and then he pulled it back.
First down and 10, Grenadiers. Janoski again off the left side. Now a little bit of blocking starting to take place on the Grenadier offensive line. Joe Costello in on the tackle, also number 83, Eric Higgins. But gain of four yards again. I mean, they're probably adjusting somewhere along the line on the on the option offensively. And now you'll watch probably an adjustment come defensively now to change a little bit about how it's how they're blocking the tackles is what's is what's changing now. Timeout called by the Grenadiers, 449 left in the first half. 14 to nothing, Red Tornadoes in the lead. I got to, to uh, talk with Coach Connors before the game. I was down checking the field out with Jose and, and he was saying about the tackles controlling the line and, and that there were several different ways that he had planned on defensing an option play tonight. So you may not always see the same defensive scheme or the same guys doing the same things. He'll be changing it around a little bit, to try to keep uh, GR off balance too. So it's kind of a cat and mouse game with the option. You know, there's a lot of ways to go on the option and there's a lot of different ways to defense it. If you wanted any defensive coach in Pennsylvania high school football to, to be calling your defense for this game against the option, it would be Charlie Conley, though. Or me. No? No. No? No. You sure of that now? Positive. Conley out there right now working with the Red Tornadoes. This is the only the second meeting of, of the GAR Grenadiers, and, and they've been around for about as long as the Red Tornadoes have been. Uh, and, and the Red Tornadoes. The first meeting, October 11th, 1930, where the Grenadiers won 13 to six. Janoski keeps the ball again. Big hit by Joe Costello, but after about a six yard gain, and right now he's doing a great fake to number 33, Big Harold Jackson. And it looks like Jackson has the ball, but he doesn't. See, this is how they won the game last time, last week, though. I said, there's not much of a pitch to this option. This option is a fake to the fullback, and he's cutting off tackle. He's not even looking to pitch the ball. He's not looking at the trailing back at, at all during the offensive uh, series. Now, you'll watch again. The graph and reads the guy you're supposed to be watching for the pitch, but you're not going to do it because he's not going along the line and pitching it. This time they're going to DeGraff and read. Good read that time by number 77, Anderson. Also 41, Joe Costello. But you have to, get, or 83 Higgins it was. But you have to give lots of credit to that left side, and it seems to be the left side of the Grenadiers. The tight end, 85, Jason Sauerwein. The left tackle, 75, Ed Shatraukas. And number 51, the left guard, John Davies. A lot of stuff going on on the left side of the, uh, of the Grenadier line at this point right now. Second down and about eight yards to go for the Grenadiers. Janoski fakes it to Jackson. Knocked out of bounds by 27 Dave Evans and also in there 26 Pete Cheddar. This is, this is an interesting option. This is a version of the option. This is not what you would think is the option. You have a fake or a give to the diving fullback. That's your first option. Now you scrape along the line looking for a hole. That's your second option. If the, the, the end commits to you, your third option is to pitch the ball to the trailing back. Here, there's no pitch. You know, they're not making an effort to pitch the ball at all. They're hitting that corner. If he sees it open, he goes. That was a straight handoff to, to DeGraff and Reed. Third down and goal to goal from the five-yard line. This one tries it up the middle. Anderson and rolling in on the tackle. Manny DeGraffenreid goes nowhere, so it'll be fourth down and five. Now, if I were them, I'd come to my right. They've banged around the left now, all the way down the field. Now might be a, a shot at coming right instead of left. They're I mean, definitely going to be demoralizing if they don't put the ball in the end zone after this drive. Now, this drive is the direct result of good field position. I can't believe they'll pass. Not the way they've been going. Janoski sets up. DeGraff and Reed, the lone back. Big rush by the Red Tornadoes. He is going to throw. Looks in the end zone. Incomplete. Over the head of everybody. Was, First was, down, Red Tornado. That was not a good offensive well, call. That not was really not. for them because it appears as they've been going, they've been picking up four and five yards uh, with the option. 
Someone down on the field there. It looked like they tried to make a, uh, a play. I, I think it's Cheddar down for the Red Tornadoes. Uh, that, that was not my, I would not have done that. I mean, obviously their passing game is not as, as sharp as you would have liked to start off with. Tonight, it's, it's, he's completed one pass all evening so far. And now they're on a fourth and five with the marbles on the line with three minutes in the first half, and he drops back and passes. I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it myself. And I'm not sure as, as the ball sailed through the air, it was to the up receiver. Cheddar was on a receiver in the deep part of the end the, zone. The, on the line. And I'm not down. sure if he hit a, a, a hole, a wet spot, whatever. He's, he is down, and uh, they're working on him right now. So 3.05 left in the first half. Red Tornadoes will take over the ball on a cold night from the Silver Bowl for the Eastern Conference Championship. Yeah, nobody, even they won't let me make calls. I wouldn't have done that. Cheddar's up right now. It looks like maybe he had the wind just knocked yeah, the out way, the way they were uh, right. holding him there. Sometimes right. that's what it means. Right now they're sort of working on his belt and just sort of helping him off. Although, no, they might have his arm. They might be holding his arm that way, uh, Warren. He's the cheese. He'll be fine. Well, we'll see. They're bringing Cheddar over to the sideline right now. As I said, Red Tornadoes will take over first down and 10 from the five-yard line. Karnaski with Joe Costello and Brett Veach as the fullback and tailback to Veach. Off the right side to the six-yard line, gain of only one yard. Harold Jackson, number 33, in on the tackle. And Cheddar definitely has, has a problem with his, with his right arm. Second down and nine for the Red Tornadoes, 2.37 on the clock. Kronaski pitches to Veach, fumble, and looks like it's recovered on about the three-yard line by Veach. Poor play that time. That was not a good play. We were, we were off timing all the way around. The ball never got to him, and uh, he was lucky to recover it. Grenadiers call timeout, trying to work the clock right now at 218. Red Tornadoes with a third down and 12 yards to go. So uh, Grenadiers will try to hold the clock here, hold the Red Tornadoes, and get the ball back with about maybe 150, 140 left on the clock. Now, the question is, will we pass? What are you calling there? <clears throat> on this field, I don't know. I'm not even going to make oh, the call. Oh, you don't know. What kind of call was that? It's 30, don't 12, know. two minutes, 18 seconds left. You're down on your own goal line. All you're going to drop back and pass. What do you think? I say yes. All right. Field holding up really well, Warren, for, for how bad it was out there. And if you look right now, I mean, they did a great job. They, they got it cleaned, and then they rolled it last night. And uh, it, it, it's holding up real well. But I, why would the Silver Bowl not hold up, right? I was a little bit miffed that, of course, you know, they did call me. I guess you knew this. And asked yes. me if I would come down and roll around the field. I, I took that as an insult, okay? I mean, I, maybe it wasn't meant that way, but I took it that way. Who did they finally get to come down and roll? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who did roll around the field last night? Big third down play for the Red Tornado offense here. Split backs. Kanaski back to pass. Looks over the middle. Eric Higgins, nobody on him. First down, Red Tornadoes at the 20-yard line. Good call, Red Tornadoes. And I rest my case. Yes. Hey, great throw by Kanaski to Higgins. Good job by Higgins breaking across the middle. Nobody on him. Nobody near Eric Higgins on that play. First down, Red Tornadoes, 2.05 left on the clock. After 12 games, finally he's starting to listen to me. Finally he's listening to my headset. I back for the Red Tornadoes. 41, Joe Costello goes to Veach off the right side, and this one goes for only about a two-yard gain. You realize I don't have to make another call the rest of the game. It's all on your shoulders now. There's a lot of heat on you right now to make a call. And I'll, I'll decide the situation, too. Initial hit made in there by number 62, Jim. You're not making any easy calls. I'm going to wait for a bad one, and you're going to have to call it. 1.30 on the clock. Time winding down for the Red Tornadoes here in the first half of the Eastern Conference Championship game. 14 to nothing, Red Tornadoes in the lead. Kanaski with the split backs puts Costello in motion. 
Pitch back to Veach. Going to come out around the left side, and that one's going nowhere. Nice tackle made by 33, Harold Jackson. And Jackson is quick for how big he is. He comes down the line of scrimmage very well. Timeout called this time by the Grenadiers again. So again, the Grenadiers shooting to try to get the ball back. Well, I only hope that they're not planning on throwing the ball in the air all over the place in the last minute because it's going to be a scary thought the way they've been passing so far. This is a team, you know, you look at the Grenadiers and, and you feel badly because they're high school kids. You come into a season with so much promise. You start off in August and they say to you, you're the odds on pick to take this baby, you know, as far as you want to go, right? Then in the, mil in the middle of practice before the, 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 the games begin, boom, the two big guys, Janusky, DeGraff, and Reed, go down with injuries. You lose the first three games of the season. Now you find yourself scratching your way back. You lose one more game down the line to uh, Lake Lehman, which was which highly regarded as we went. They win the rest of their football games, beat a tough Meyer squad to come down here. You wonder what they think about it sometimes, what could have been, you know, what was for those guys. These seniors can never get it back. You know, nope. it's gone for them. And it was nothing that they could have done. Just in a freak injury to two players, you know, sinks a, a, a state playoff bid for them. But yet they were able to recover and come into an Eastern Conference final. Big shift by the Red Tornadoes. Puts Hepler to the left. Hand off to Veach. Up the middle. Nice tackle made by number 84, Wayne Wick Whitaker. It's a first down. That's what I'm waiting to see. Did they call it? I'm telling you, you're going to have to start calling these hard <laughs> ones. First down, Red Tornadoes on the 33-yard line. Timeout called by the Red Tornadoes with 59 seconds left on the clock. And I forgot to tell everybody, and I'm going to get the wiki stick. This is WKMC-TV you're listening to, ladies and gentlemen. We are an instructional fixed television service. Our microwave signal is WLX-267. You are catching us on a, well, catching us on a Wednesday, Wednesday night, night. eight-ish. I'm all confused here with this you got night it. game. It's tomorrow night. You catch us Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. And it's a courtesy of the service electric cable systems that you see us. We broadcast right off the campus from our own studio facilities. My main man, Tony's in the back of us here. Movie star Tony, I might add. Tony Nestico, of course, the mayor of Cult Mountain, or the ersatz mayor of Cult Mountain, one or the other. Coach Williams out now working on the last 59 seconds of the first half, an impressive first half by the Red Tornadoes. We remind you to look forward to the to the uh, paper. It'll be telling you when we're broadcasting. Of course, we will begin a full season of, of uh, both boys and girls basketball, wrestling, uh, the whole nine yards throughout the winter months. Uh, look forward to doing that, those kind of things and learning a little bit more about wrestling maybe. From the shotgun, Karnaski over the middle, hits Gunther at about the 42-yard line. One man to beat, and he tackles him at the 34. But a great throw by Karnaski and a flag on the play. Uh, nope, he picked his flag up. Uh, um, it just fell out of his pants. Clock will great be held play. until they move the chains. Great play that time. Chains are being moved right now, and they start the clock with 48 seconds left on the clock. Karnaski again from the shotgun. Puts Hepler far to the right. Snaps back. Looks at Hepler on the sideline. Hits him. He goes to get out of bounds and will get out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. And this will stop the clock and flags on the play. This one's going to be called against the Red Tornadoes. Well, if it goes against us, it had to be something he said because he didn't do right. anything. No. He had to have said something probably as he was leaving the sideline. That's the only thing it could be. He didn't touch the guy. He didn't do anything. He got right back up. He got hit into the snow pile. The dead ball foul on sportsmanlike conduct against the Red Tornadoes. Now, that's what you said. That was a verbal call. Yeah, it had to be. <laughs> I mean, he had to have said something because he didn't do anything. He didn't motion. He didn't, you know, do a thing. So and that were the calls made where he went out of bounds. So. That's going to drive Big Red back. First, they're going to move the chains. That was a first down. Like, is that what they're doing? Well, we're looking. It's a first down. It'll be a 15-yard penalty as they move then the ball they, back. Then they right. move the ball right. back. Right. Okay. So it'll be a first down and 25 for the Red Tornadoes.
Red Tornadoes will take over on the uh, 30 on their on the Grenadiers 39 yard line. 27 seconds left on the clock. I wasn't watching it. You know what I well, don't? No, I don't see on our side. I don't see Cheddar on the sideline now. Did he leave? I don't see him standing anywhere down there. Boy, I missed it too, Warren. Yeah, he must have left. They must have taken him off. Shotgun formation, big rush this time by the Grenadiers. Draw play to Evans. Find some running room. Now he has lots of running room. Touchdown, <laughs> Red Tornadoes. What a pretty play Great that was. Great job that time oh, by the Red Tornadoes. Davey Evans, he, he was truly amazing. Went way up in the air to catch the ball. I didn't see who made the crucial block. There was only no. one Grenadier right, there. Right. Somebody nailed him, took him out of the play, and Evans put the ball in the end zone. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. 13 seconds left on the clock, and the Red Tornadoes put that one up in the first half. Chicatano takes it, Evans. <laughs> He's in. In for the two. He's in. Good job that time. Good blocking that time by the right side of the, of the I guess Boyer was there in number 75. John <laughs> Else there. Also number seven. Uh, who's this coming? 58, uh, Gary Dunn. 56, Gary Dunn. So good job that time by the by the uh, extra point team of the Red Tornadoes. Oh boy, you, you know, this is, if you're if you're GER now, you've scouted Mount Carmel area. You had to see us three, four games. We've been doing this thing for three years, <laughs> and still they didn't have enough well, guys lined you know up what? over they there did. to do it. That time, they had everybody there that was the last two times. They just ran it. They were going to run that for two that That's... time. I think I think uh, Joe Shikatano and Dave Evans won that to, extra It two. used to amaze me that we even did that ever. You know, I, I never understood that whole lineup, but I have to admit, it's six, the two, three times you use it a year, it's always successful. With 13 seconds left in the first half, the score, the Red Tornadoes, 22 the Wilkesbury GR Grenadiers zero, and what a great performance by these young Red Tornadoes. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, it, this is this is, looks like a case to me of you don't come into our house and push us around. That's right. I mean, they're truly dominating the, the line of scrimmage right now in Squib almost all phases of the game. Squib kick picked up by number 45, Bob Wickheiser, ooh, ooh. and big hit made over there by number 28, Molosevich, and also Shikitano. 66, Joe Shikitano. Yeah, so the Grenadiers with only six seconds left on the clock, and I think they'd be happy to down the ball and just get out of this thing. Yeah, I, I think so, too. They were rocked on our heels on this last six seconds. I mean, I don't think they felt we could have scored from that position on the field, especially with that little bit of time left. So there it is. There's the end of the half. That's the end of the first half. The score, the Red Tornadoes, 22 the Grenadiers zero. We'll be back with halftime stats in one moment. Bob hey, for the Eastern Conference Championship, right. why not both of us be On here? the halftime show, which we lost the sign to, That's which right. I was so proud of. But <laughs> the stats, again, are half indicative. Halftime stats, go ahead. Indicative of the way the game was played in the first half. Mount Carmel rushed the ball 15 times for a total of 51 yards. Passing, they were 6 of 11 for 132 yards. Individually in the rushing, each 13 times for 52 yards. And the cast man, 2 for a minus 1. And we bring this up only in that, we want to whisper this, it was the first minus yard rushing he's had this year. So my guess is he's done tearing all of the lockers out of the room now, and he's starting on sinks and toilets. We want to get him back out as soon as we can to get him the ball. In the uh, pass catching department, Gunther had two for 44, Evans two for 49, and one for a touchdown. Hepler one for 10, Higgins one for 17. GR, on the other hand, rushed the ball 19 times for 42 yards. Passing is where this tells the most. They were one of six for 16 yards. And two interceptions. And two interceptions. Right. 
16 yards compared to 132 yards from Mount Carmel area in the passing department is why the score is 21, 22-0 Mount Carmel area. First downs were, were fairly even in seven for Mount Carmel area and five for uh, GAR. But again, when you say that, again, Mount Carmel played that half real heavily in the first quarter in GAR's yeah. end zone. Yeah, I mean, that's the field position. The only time GR had field position, they marched the ball down to the five-yard line and coughed it up. I got a couple of side lights here now. Cheddar dislocated his elbow. He's okay. being taken to the guy singer now. Uh, they'll have it x-rayed and all. Doc Greco said they'll then get three big guys to try to put it back in. It's not pretty. We figure we'll hear Pete scream probably here when wow. it happens. We, we wish him the best. He right. took a, a nasty right. hit down there, dislocated his elbow. The first uh, penalty that was called over on the bench, this is from now. I talked with the sideline crew, the right. marker crew. I saw them coming That's over right. and talking to you. I don't usually go in there into that depth, but this time I figured, what the heck, I asked those guys. Apparently, GER started this game out by yelling at the refs that they were homers. I mean, and then began using extremely foul language, at which time one of them threw the flag and said, guys, you don't shut your mouth. This is going to be over. You're going to be out of here. Well, if you're going to call these refs homers, you better talk about it because Alex Brogna is from Pittston. Fisher, Catuzzo, White, Murdoch, and Galickney are all from Wilkesbury. Well, I might add so, that I mean, we don't it's choose hard them. calling us. The yes, Eastern right. Conference chose Eastern them. Conference chose so them. So it's it's somewhat odd to believe that that GR came down and, and and believe that they were getting the short end of the stick with the rest. We saw no funny right, calls, right. especially when they were making all these comments. The sideline crew tells me that now the sidelines are quiet. We're not hearing any discussion with the referees. The Hepler incident was not anything he said. Apparently, when he got back up out of the snow pile. He shoved the ball into the other guy's stomach. The referee saw it, called, called it a flag. A, a flag, you know, 15 yards, and that's where that came from. It's a little bit of extra insight here in the big game. Send me down there point once more time. <laughs> I could probably find everything out. One other thing that was talked about a little bit here at halftime was on the option for GAR and not defending how what they do, but on the option. It's sometimes a little more difficult on this kind of field to, to run an option. And, uh, and the bottom line is the Red Tornado defense probably probably put together the best half of defense that we've seen them play yeah. this year yeah they're they're tough now again you're hearing from the sideline crew apparently gr maybe isn't all that happy with as many quarterback keeps as, as, as we've seen and i've been saying that in the beginning they're not running a true option because they're not trailing the tailback you don't trail the tailback there's no pitch right so there's you no go third get option. The quarterback right so he seems to be he apparently he's committing to run the corner before he sees all his options. And then, of course, that negates the option that way. So we're going to look forward in the second half, one, to see what Januski does. Two, down 21-0, they got to pass more, and that's not their forte. Right. So we'll watch here. We, I guess we're about, yeah. We're not ready, ready to, to begin, start the so. second half, so we'll be back with second half in one moment. Ready to start off here, number 42, Mike Sinkovich will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. And the one thing that can happen here, Warren, is with it is 22-0, but it's an explosive offensive team. We've seen it. You just can't let up. You just have to keep the pressure in a championship game going forever. Oh, you can't let up. I mean, the speed alone will kill you on, on the GER team. Great kick by Sinkovic, taken by number one, Sean Coleman. Brings it up the middle, finds a running room, and tackled by number 81, Zavarik, and also number 45, Ryan McGee. And McGee did a great job that time of running them down. We saw some speed from number one there, too. Yep. Coleman. John Coleman, a junior, he'll be back next year. So first down and 10 for the option. See what kind of changes J.R. coaching staff has made. Oh, they're quieter. <laughs> <laughs> Janoski still with the ball, still looks at the trailer, but does nothing again, as you said, Warren. A good tackle made by 61, Roland, 77, Anderson. 31, Corey Hepler also in there. You know, maybe maybe the offense designed like that. I don't know. You know we have a guy, a guy down. He's on one knee. I, I'm not sure if it's Higgins, I guess. No, uh, Higgins, no, no, it's a linebacker. It's Joey Shikitano. Okay, we, we're we looking at this, uh, this option again. Now, they came out, I said to him, we'd see the second half exactly what the option was going to be. And again, the option, there was no third option. They are not even looking to that pitch. We're not, it's not that we're taking the pitch away. He's never even looking at the right. pitch. He doesn't even know where the guy is to pitch it to him. It's a straight run from the time he takes the ball out of the fullback's, you know, hold 
and, and makes his move on the line. And right now, and Joe Chicatano looks okay. He just took a shot, and he's going to come off for a couple plays. Joe has that. He only has that walk like, do I have to come off? Oh, we got a fist. He just showed me. Yeah, as he's walking off, he's, he showed an, a good uppercut. So <laughs> I think he took a good shot to the stomach. Second down and 12 yards to go for the Grenadiers. 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Janoski fakes to everybody. He's going to throw. He's looking downfield. Let's one fly. Veach there, and he's bumped by number 85, Sauerwein. Tell you what, that was close. Close to an interference, but probably the ball was thrown too far. Yeah, that was. Now, we're looking We're looking to see who's in the ball game. And it look, it's Ron Davis would be no, in. Okay, Davis went, but who's in the backfield for Cheddar? You've got Malakuski and Evans. Malik Evans is always in, though. So Malakuski would be the guy that's... No, he was in the night, too. So maybe Veach wasn't in the night. Veach. It could be I'm Brett sorry, Veach. Veach, right. you're right. That's exactly right. who it He's is. He's covering for... Uh, Veach took Cheddar's For place. Cheddar over there, right. So again, we wish the best for Pete. A painful injury, very painful hey, injury. Here comes a pair into the stands right now. Two All-Staters from last year, Mike <laughs> Higgins and Joel Gonzalo. Yeah. The thrills they gave us over four years, my goodness. You get the chills here, not from the cold, but just from seeing the two of them. Janoski back to pass. Looks on a fly pattern. Ooh, over the head of number 31, Joe Janik. But he had the line that time to catch the ball. He just, this, this quarterback just doesn't have the time, though. They're going to have to block better. Or he's going to get killed out there. Fourth down, and it'll put number four, Alex Janoski, back in punt formation. 10.48 left in the third. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, 29, Malakoski, and 27, Dave Evans. Wobbly high snap. Janoski gets off a lousy kick. It's going to bounce on the 39-yard line, out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. So first down and 10, Red Tornadoes in good field position. Well, I'm, I'm sure not the way that the Grenadiers wanted to start the second half out. Definitely uh, not. They, they just didn't look sharp again. They, they, they look a step slow almost all the time. I don't know if it's the footing. One thing to remember is they played their last game on AstroTurf. I don't know how many games they played during the year in AstroTurf. G is GER, is that their I home don't know. field? I, I'm drawing a blank on that one. I think that was uh, Myers, Myers home field. Myers home field. So. But I'm sure they've played a couple of games on that carpet, which may make it more difficult for them to adjust to a muddy field. Costello for a game of four or five yards, maybe five yards. A good run that time by Joe Costello. Put his head down, ran it up the middle, in on the tackle, 62, Jim Costello. And that puts, that puts uh, Costello back in positive yardage i guess he uh, <laughs> i know he had a, if he knew, maybe they didn't tell him the smart thing would be not to tell him <laughs> he found out he was a minus one yard he'd be ugly second down and five yards to go for the red tornadoes 10 7 left in the third quarter big red up 22 to nothing beach off the right side Breaks a tackle, first down, Red Tornadoes at the 49-yard line. Tackle made by number four, Alex Janoski. Good blocking on the right side of the Red Tornado line that time. Fedok, Ron Davis, and Brian Lepotsky. I'm sorry. Boyer's over there, a <laughs> tackle on the right side. Nine thirty-six left in the third. Split backfield. Costello takes it up the middle. Good read that time by the linebacker number thirty-one, Joe Janik. Oh, the neighborhood's going in on offense. <laughs> <laughs> Number 77, Bill Anderson will come in at right tackle for the Red Tornadoes. Again, go from the split backfield on second down and 10. The ball right about on the 50-yard line. Karnaski hits number 30, Sean Jamin, close to a first down. That is a first and it down. will be a first down, and Jamin down over on the sideline. Yeah, he's down, but he ran two guys over to get where he was going. He's down over on the far sideline there. Tough play by Jamin that time. So we'll have timeout called here for an injury as Jamin's being tended to by Doc Jeff Greco.
he put some extra effort there at that last second, though. Whatever he, whatever he did over there, I hope he's okay. Well, that was a tough run that time. Tough run to get that last. He, he made a great catch, and then he, got, he needed two more yards, and he got him. Jamin's up, and they're uh, working him off the sideline right now. Uh, it looks like he just took a pretty good shot. They're a tough football team. The Grenadiers are hitting very hard out oh, there right now. There are no slouches, that's for sure. Right now, you know, you have to think about, uh, of course, Wayne over in Bosnia-Herzegovina. You know, like, right now, there's probably an argument over rye or wheat in this big baker strike that he's mediating over in Bosnia. Personally, I think he's the best man for it. You know. Red Tornadoes will take over first down and 10 from the 40 yard line. Inside hand off the beach, and that one goes nowhere for about a two-yard loss. Tried that one up the middle. They're tough. They're tough right in the middle. It's when you get on either side of them on that tackle, two tackle positions, where they give some ground a little bit. They've been tough in the middle all the way, and that it's indicative that they're tough in that Costello finished with a minus one in the first half. You know, if you're stopping him, you know you're tough in the middle. Where they've been giving it up is mostly passing, of course, but on the ends. That's that's where we seem to be gaining some yardage. Second down and 12. Passing situation for the Red Tornadoes. Karnaski, big rush this time from the Grenadiers. Finds some running room, looks down. I don't even saw it. Broken up by Janoski, but I'll tell you what, he had Malakoski standing there all by himself. It was just hard for Vic to get it to him yeah. because he was he was running. He, he had to keep, keep his momentum going to keep from getting tackled. Third down and 12. Well, he had two guys down there, actually. Some lousy coverage that time by the Grenadiers. <clears throat> 7.39 left in the third quarter. 22 to nothing, Red Tornadoes in the lead. Oh, Evans goes in motion. Shovel pass to Veach, and that should be an incompleted pass. Yeah, it will be. He knew it. He knew it he first tried to pick it up, but he knew right away it was. Fourth down for the Red Tornadoes puts number 41, Joe Costello, in punt formation. Costello's punting from one of the poorer positions on the field. Yeah, this right is now. a tough spot right here and a tough snap for Joey Shikitano. And flags on the play. But that's what happens when you get in that mud like that, the ball doesn't want to come out of the mud. You right. have to put exactly. pressure down, and you're putting it down into the mud. It won't come back up for you. Joe Schick did a great job there of getting that snap off. That's going against Big Red. Mm, it's a dead ball foul, illegal procedure called against the Red Tornadoes. You have illegal procedure on the punt. <laughs> Not usually when you see no. <laughs> I don't know what we were doing there. Well, again, a lineman can move, and that, that would do it right there, probably. Yeah, I guess. I just, it's an odd call. You don't usually move on the punt. Well, it, puts, it puts Costello in a little better position to punt from there, and Chicatano gets off a much better snap. Oh. And boy, does he sail this punt. It's going to be taken on about the five-yard line. Brings it around the left side. He's still on his feet oh. and crushed by Evans. Oh. Costello, oh. big hit by the Red Tornado. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Number 45, Bob Wickheiser, got the feel of Red Tornado defense right there. Oh. What a hit. Oh. Evans, <laughs> Evans held him up and said, here, kill him. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. First down and 10, Grenadiers from the 30-yard line. Jamin comes out of the ball game, and they're going to give him a little rest. Puts number 28, Molosevic, in at left, the defensive end. Janoski on the option, takes it all by himself. Gain of about, oh, gets a first down. He does a little second effort there. Gretzky in on the tackle, number eight. But a good job that time 
by the Grenadiers to break it outside. And probably the first time Janowski really went to the wide side of the field yeah. and just kept going. Yeah, that's that's right. He did. It's not a play that's worked very well for them. It's not. They've not been very successful at that play. And that's probably the first time you really saw it work for good yardage. First down, Grenadiers from the 41-yard line. Now he has the wide side to the left, so usually in a good option, you're coming to the wide side of the field. That's, that's the rule. Not this time. Well, they give it to Jackson, and that's going nowhere. Higgins in on the tackle, Anderson in on the tackle, and also number uh, Rowan or Evans? Saw so Evans do a roll there. I don't know if he was in on it or not. I'm looking at, I was looking at Big, <laughs> Big myself. I'll tell you what, Big's going to have to earn that name. You don't walk in here and, and have a nickname, and so far, Big isn't that big. <laughs> Second down and 11 yards to go. Six minutes left in the third quarter. Janoski goes from the eye, but it will be an option call. He's going to pass from it. Looks on the fly. Oh, great play made by Gretzky that time to break it up. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it was. He, he was well covered, and the ball was not thrown that well, but he kept moving to it, and that took him out of our coverage a little bit. Gretzky made a great play to recover and, and you know put the ball on the ground, and I think he felt he should have intercepted it, actually. Passing situation for the Grenadiers, so it brings number 54, Jeff Evans, in at nose. The bullet. Oh, the They're going to fire the bullet through the middle. <laughs> He'll be disrupting everything again. Janoski sets up with split backs. He's back to pass. Big rush from Anderson, also Hepler. Let's one go, intercepted by Joe Shikitano, and again, Janoski does not make a real good throw. Well, Hepler blocked it. Hepler tipped it, that's what happened. But again, the, the, the point was he shouldn't have thrown it. He, right. could, he had the sideline to him, run out of the sidelines and call it a day there. He, he's under extreme pressure, but he's not making the right decisions on when he should and shouldn't throw the ball. And I'll tell you what, number 20, Manny De, uh, DeGraffenried hasn't done much tonight, but he's going off with a bad arm right now. He cannot pick his right arm up. It's just hanging down at his side, and uh, that's their tailback and their main man that they didn't really get to tonight. Yeah, but we didn't see much of him. <clears throat> he's definitely hurt. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes from the 40-yard line. Up the middle to Costello. Off the right side, gain of about four yards. Good job that time by Costello in the right side of the Red Tornado offense. 62 on the tackle, Jim Costello. The two Jim Costello meet play. each other yeah, a lot. Yeah, you know there. what? He's playing a heck of a game. Okay. Costello, number 62, for GAR, doing a great job on defense. Yeah, he's having a tough football game. We called his name a lot tonight. Number five, Jason Gunther brings in the play for the Red Tornadoes. 4.57 left in the third quarter. Evans in motion, pitch to Veach, out around the left side. Find some running room, turns it on. There it is, the burst of speed, touchdown, Red Tornadoes. That was fabulous, really was. Great blocking again. Good block that time. He was time. watching 68, uh, Leposky. Leposky, and he waited just a little bit for Leposky. Now, Leposky didn't have to make a block. He needed no. to run outside right. of him, to get and him that out. opened up the hole. And that's exactly what Leposky did. Red Tornadoes in to attempt the extra point. 66, Chicatano will snap. Gretzky with the hold and 31, Corey Hepler to attempt the extra point. Snaps down, kicks up. Ooh, may have missed that one. And no good. With 437 remaining in the third quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes 28, the Grenadiers 0. Well, not, not the type of game we expected. Let's face it. We, Definitely we not. We had thought it was going to be a much tighter football game. And, and it really isn't. Uh, GER did not, does not look good tonight. They don't look nearly as good as they did against Myers, unless Myers was, was a poor football team. I don't know which it is here. But offensively, they've generated nothing. They cannot pass. There's absolutely no passing offense to this game at all. I mean, they're no threat to pass, they, and, and when they do, it usually turns out badly for them. So, the, and what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make now is that with four minutes and 37 seconds left in the third quarter, how do you come back? Right, from 29 points, I mean, or 28 points. It's going to be a tough road to hoe to come back without a real passing offense. 
Kicking off for the Red Tornadoes, number 42, Mike Sinkovich. They let him sail a long one again. This one's going to be taken by number one, Sean Coleman. At about the five yard line, finds him right. Big Ooh. hit by the freshman, number 42, Ooh. Sinkovich with the hit. Also helping out 28, Molosevich, and number 81, Mike Zanar. Oh, he's getting up slow. Let's welcome to Sinko's world. <laughs> <laughs> What a hit. Boy, he was at full tilt when he got nailed, too. Ooh. <laughs> you know, you look at the two. I said it every every game. You look at those two Cinco's and you think, oh, my. He got three full years of those guys coming back and killing people. 41, Joe Costello in on the tackle of Manny DeGraffenreid. And DeGraffenreid going nowhere on that play except for about a two-yard loss. Yeah, the graph and read has got to be frustrated. But uh, the only thing I can say, I mean, unless it's a designed offense, and I, I don't think it is, is that the graph and read must not be at full potential here because they're not using him in the option at all. They really That are. was just a pitch. Yeah, that's him. a pitch. That wasn't an option play. He's not being used as a trailing back at all through this whole option offense. So I have to assume maybe something's wrong with him. Maybe he's not at, you know, at full 100%. This one they're going to try. Jackson. Oh, no, it's Janoski with the ball. Tackle made by Costello, also helped out by Mola Savage. Gain of about six yards, and that was a good fake that time. Yeah. I thought Jackson had the ball on that play. Yeah, it was a good fake, but I don't think you can win the game with this play. No. I really don't. Oh, no, not, not with 312 left in the third quarter. I believe the bottom line is you're not going to win this football game by having the quarterback carry the ball on, on, on a quarterback keeper all the time down the line. The Grenadiers set up from the I formation. Janoski, gonna keep the ball, take it off the right side, gets his first down, and then is tackled over there. Initial hit made by number 22, Veach, and then finished off by number 30, Jamin. I mean, if you're Big Red, you're saying to yourself, I hope he runs the ball every time. Right. You know, there's just no way that he's gonna win the football game. He's gonna be out of time. Number 48, Dennis Krzyzewski into the lineup for the Red Tornadoes. He'll come in at linebacker for Joe Shikitano. This one's going to be to DeGraff and read off the left side. Oh. Big hit by 77, Bill Anderson. What a game Anderson's putting together tonight. Oh, he is. The neighborhood is ugly tonight. I mean, they have done nothing to his side. Nothing. Number 83, Higgins into the lineup now, and he'll take the place of Jamin. And right now, just keep getting fresh legs in, in and out, and, and it helps a lot at this stage of the game, especially the way this defensive played. That Every kid out there has given 110% tonight. Oh, they really have. They've, they came in and, and said to themselves, let's bring an Eastern Conference championship home, and, and that's exactly what they're well on their way to doing here in the waning seconds of the third period. Janoski, back to pass. Gretzky on the defense, and it's say. incomplete. There's no way he caught no. that. I, well, I, no signals from the ref, so I didn't know really what to call on that. There was no way that he caught that football. Joe Shikitano back in with third down and nine yards to go. The reason I say that is because their coaching staff is saying that he did. Well, their backs were turned. His back was turned to them, right? His back was turned. I don't know what those guys, <laughs> what game they came to watch tonight. I'm starting to worry about that group. First down and 10 from the, or third down and 10 from the 40-yard line. Janoski still with the ball. Jeff Evans and Corey Hepler on the tackle. Good job that time by the Red Tornadoes. Fourth down. For the Grenadiers, put him in punt formation, and Janoski should be there for punting. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, number 27, Dave Evans, and number 29, Dan Malakoski. And if Janoski gets off a kick, one of these two guys could run this one back. The only problem is Janoski hasn't been kicking too no, good He hasn't tonight. gotten into the two deep guys <laughs> so far tonight. Snaps back, kicks away. This time it's going to be fielded by Evans. 
He gets the ball at about the 35 yard line, hit on the 40. Now still with the ball, still going with the ball, still with the ball to the 41 it. yard line. Great run back by the Red Tornadoes. Oh, I can't, and we have flags on the play. I can't believe that Evans took that hit <laughs> and, and bounced off him and then went upfield from it. Great job, even with flags on the play. Very great, a great play by the Red Tornadoes. Now they're going to call it back, but it doesn't take anything right. away from what he just did on that play. That was fantastic. That really was. Somebody made some good blocks in there, too. Ooh, right. Now they're calling a clip, and I, I didn't see it because I, I was watching him. I mean, that's such a great run. I mean, my goodness. And that's that shows you the strength, the upper body strength that Evans is, is, is bringing into the game. Okay, this one will move it back. 28-yard line? So we're close. No, further. 26. 26 to 27 yard line. And we're, we're having a we're having a snow squall. Yeah, a little squall down. coming through. A little heavier snow beginning to fall now as, as the game progresses. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Big red, of course, comfortably in the lead. 28 to nothing. I think it's a lot warmer on the red tornado sideline than it is on the <laughs> GAR <laughs> sideline. Winning as a way of doing that. That's right. Kronaski sets the red tornadoes. Going to try it to Costello, finds running room. Big run, oh, knocked out of his hands, but Costello recovers the ball, <laughs> good for a first down. My goodness, he, I think he had himself a touchdown. And that too. guy, well, the guy went right after yeah, the ball. Just, he, just, he, he, he the only thing he hit, the only thing he hit was the ball, but look, yeah, at, but look that, at the cast. That was going to be a touchdown. Right. Cashman had goal line written on that baby. <laughs> first down and 10 red tornadoes from the 38 yard line. This man's not a happy man right now. <laughs> Nine seconds left in the third quarter, and the Red Tornadoes will leave this one wind down, and that'll be the end of the third quarter with the score. The Red Tornadoes 28, the Wilkesbury GR Grenadiers 0. And as we've said, Warren, the Tornadoes have put together probably the three best quarters of this year. They're, yeah, they're playing solid football, offensively, defensively. I mean, special teams play. Everything looks good tonight. They really are. They came into the game to play. And, they, and that's what they're doing. They're playing hard nose football, and they've rocked GR back on their heels right now. Let me take a moment. I'll do this at the right time. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to WKMC TV, microwave signal WLX267. We are an instructional fixed television service. We are broadcasting directly from the studio facilities at Mount Carmel Area High School. You're catching us on Wednesday night, 8 p.m., courtesy of the Service Electric Cable System on their channel 13. Very good. We'll also take a moment here, because a lot of people see this broadcast, from what we understand anyway, at least we hope they do. <laughs> We're a Tuesday night. You're, you're going to be seeing this tomorrow night, which is Wednesday night. We're going to take a moment. Of course, this is the final game for Big Red. They looks to, with all intent and purposes, they'll be bringing home an Eastern Conference championship. We want to say to those teams neighboring around us, and there are all of the teams around us in the state playoffs, right. we got the North Schuylkill Spartans. We want to wish them good luck. Of course, they're going up against Berwick. Right. And, and uh, that'll be a, a, a big game on Saturday. I'll finish this when we have to run this play. Kanaski to Veach. And good tackle made that time by Harold Jackson. We want to take a moment and, and, and wish good luck again to the Southern Columbia Area Tigers. And this is a special one. The Tigers are coming to the Silver Bowl, ladies yep. and gentlemen. Friday night at 7 p.m. Everybody come down here and you see You come it. down. You want to see some big-time football. Southern Columbia against the Columbia uh, they don't Crimson Tide. Okay. The Columbia, they're down from the Lancaster area, from what I understand. A big Class A PIAA state playoff game in the Silver Bowl. Silver Bowl. You want to come down here on Friday night and watch Southern Columbia Tigers advance through the playoffs. This one's up the middle of Costello. Big run. Gain of about six yards to about the 44-yard line. We got the Shemokin area Indians in the state playoffs still. They advance. We'll be playing at Shikalimi Stadium. I don't know. Right, play against though, Mannheim Central. Oh, sorry, Man I did yep. know it. Mannheim Central, a big game at Shikalimi High School. And last but not least, of course, Lion Mountain making their first appearance in the PIAA playoffs. I don't know where they're playing, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't hear that one. I but didn't either. We want to wish good luck to the Eagles, all of the local teams, of course. They're our neighbors. They're coal region football, and we want to see them go all the way. That's right. And we wish everybody good luck. And again, Friday night, if you can, you want to see a great football game. The Tigers are at the Silver Bowl. Inside handoff to Evans. Finds running room. 
still on his feet to the 40. To the 30, he'll turn it on. He'll score. Touchdown, yeah. Red Tornado. All right. He outrun Evan. De Graffin Reed. All right, Davey. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time since 1973, I believe, right? Yes. The Eastern Conference is coming home. <laughs> In to attempt the extra point, number 31, Corey Hepler. Joe Chicatano, 66, will be on the snap, and number eight, Gretzky will hold. Snaps back, kicks up, and it's good. With 10-22 remaining in this Eastern Conference Championship ball game, the score, the Red Tornadoes 34, the Wilkesbury GAR Grenadiers nothing. And you're gonna see uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty leveled against GAR. After the kick, somebody took Higgins and nailed him when he wasn't looking, put him in on the ground, and that'll be assessed, I guess, on the kick, yeah, on the kickoff. That'll be 15 yards against the Grenadiers. Not a very nice play, guys. Nope. That was bad, bad, bad. Well, and, and with this much time left in this ball game, 10-22, you don't know how ugly it could get. Well, I mean, that was that was a cheap shot. Let's face it, you don't want to see that happening. A lot of frustration on the Grenadier side. They came in so highly touted. I'm sure in Wilkes-Barre, you know, the word was we'll come down to Mount, Mount Carmel, we'll take home an Eastern Conference and make up for our lack of state playoffs. But again, you came into the Silver Bowl, you came in the winter, you know, when, when the That's real right. tough times are here. You don't beat the Red Helmets in the winter time. It doesn't happen. A little bit of snow as a backdrop here. This is the big time. In the kickoff for the Red Tornadoes, number 42, Mike Sinkovich. Sinkovich squibs one, bounces over Jackson's head, Ooh. and is fielded by number one, Coleman, on about the three-yard line. Run down by number 81, Zavarik, with the initial hit. Joe Shikatano yeah. also in there to help out, and Ryan McGee, number 45, flags on the play. I didn't, I didn't see that. Nope, did I'm not sure where this one's coming from. It was from the... Yeah, from it's away the, from uh, the play. GAR so. sideline is where the flag was thrown, but... I didn't even see a red tornado over there. Yeah, I don't know what, what he saw. Maybe he got he saw a dead ball foul, personal foul against the red tornadoes, and I'm not too sure anybody was over there. I don't know. I don't know who that was against. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so GAR will take over first down and 10 from the 29 yard line. Back-to-back well, -back unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, and you're right. Now that now the referees are the guys that are on the hot spot. Now you got to keep this game under control. You got uh, 10 minutes left to play here in the, in the fourth quarter. Let's get everybody out of here. Let's not get anybody hurt and do anything dumb. Janoski from the option and goes nowhere. I mean that that one was <laughs> unbelievable. I mean the red tornadoes were all there. Hepler. Uh, Shikatano, 77, Anderson. Hepler uh, pulled a muscle or something. He's coming off to the sideline. Be a cramp, maybe. 76 into the ball game. Uh, Mike Boyer. Boyer walks, it takes his place. I make it to 12 games, and now I forget everybody's number in the last game. Like, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I see these guys for, for 12 games, and I can't remember everybody's name now. Yeah, a little change at the uh, linebacker, 40. Is it seven? Is this one of the Sinkovichs is in? Uh, Mike, Steve Sinkovich in there. It's going to be a flea flicker. Janoski looking downfield, but guess who's there? Malakowski. Great play by Dan no, Malakowski. No. And they're going to call interference. Oh. But, but number 10 actually ran into him. Tony Falcone ran into number 29, Malakowski, and Malakowski did a good job of knocking that it down. That was the first poor call of yep. the evening, I think. I think it was a poor call that time. But who are we to say? Well, we're allowed to say that. <laughs> That's one of the best parts about this job. We can say that kind of stuff and get away with it. Well, this will be a penalty against the uh, Red Tornadoes and uh, give the Grenadiers a first down. 
9.02 left in the ball game. Janoski sets up with Jackson and DeGraffenried in the backfield. Going to DeGraffenried off the right side. In on the tackle, 66 Chicatano, helped out by 76 Boyer. Something a lot of people might be wondering, you don't see it tonight because of the lack of the sideline camera due to the extremely poor field conditions, but if you've seen in the other games, you'll notice that Malcolm Malaria has four black stripes. Everybody's wearing them on their helmet. All coaches wear them on either their hat or their coat. Those four black stripes signify something special to Big Red. And, and they're in memorial for uh, Joe Shereko. And a lot of people don't know Joe. Joe was a quiet, shy man. But Joe was, was the ultimate Mount Carmel area <laughs> fan. I mean, right. he lived and breathed Mount Carmel area football. Oh, that one was almost picked off by Evans. And you know where that one was going, Warren? In the end zone. Joe, Joe followed Mount Carmel area football. I mean, he wore the red and white coats all the time. He was everything. And, and he realized for him, and he was... I guess in his late 60s, probably this year or early 70s even, he realized the real dream for, for himself and that he became the equipment manager. He was down on the field and he was the equipment manager. And of course, we mentioned this earlier in the year, Joe passed away suddenly, uh, about the eighth game of the season or seventh game of the season. I'll finish when we're done the play. Third down and about eight yards to go. 8.16 left. Janowski gonna come out around the end. Now they use the pitch. First time they've really run it, and Veach is going to run him down to Graf and Reed and knocks him out of bounds at about the 46-yard line, but that will be close to a GAR first down. Yeah. First time, The first time we've seen the trailing back at really? the pitch. It's amazing. But getting back to Joe for one last second, of course, Joe didn't have much family. There wasn't a lot of family around here for him. These kids really took a liking to him. and he, I mean, he truly would have done anything for them. I mean, just being around him made his day. So they wore... For each game that, that they won in his honor for the, for the season, they put a black stripe on their helmet. And, and they had told us at Supper Club, the last ones, that you know they were gonna, they were gonna get five black stripes. They weren't gonna win an Eastern Conference championship. They were talking about five black stripes, which would have meant they won the Eastern right. Conference. And I just wanna say that I know that, that Joe's up there right now and he's smiling. He's smiling that that other stripe's gonna go on those helmets at the end of the game. Blitz that time. Jackson hit by Mullisevich. Mm. Additional hit made by 41 Costello. But then hit, by, oh, and then Jackson oh, kicks rolling. Big. He kicked rolling. Come on, big. And Jackson kicked rolling on that play big, right at the end of the play. Uh, big, big's not a happy man. If you gained about four yards all game, you wouldn't, wouldn't be, be too happy, happy either. either right. Big's been having a rough time. Big hasn't seen the line of scrimmage much this, this whole game. Second down and nine yards to go for the Grenadiers. 7.30 left on the clock. As this one's winding down, the Eastern Conference Finals from the Silver Bowl in Mount Carmel. Janoski, the blitz is on again. <laughs> Big play by Costello and 77, <laughs> Bill Anderson. <laughs> what I like when they do that. I, that's really <laughs> good. That's the kind of play where, you, first of all, you didn't need Castman to blitz because Anderson already had everybody in the neighborhood <laughs> on the ground. But Castman blitzes, catches you from behind, you go nowhere. <laughs> The neighborhood has truly been an unfriendly place for the Grand Army of the wow, Republic. Wow, unbelievable. Right now, I think, I think William's probably feeling a, a tad unpatriotic <laughs> what he's done to the Grand Army tonight. <laughs> Third down and nine yards to go. 6.50 left on the clock. The Grand Army is going to be marching back in full retreat tonight. <laughs> what the wolves there. Janotsky has been throwing, <clears throat> throwing from this point, but hands off to the graph and read out around the left side. Find some running room. But he'll be stopped. <clears throat> so it'll be fourth down on about four yards to go. <clears throat> it's, you know, I, I think, and, and again, unless there's something wrong with that kid that we were not told about in the pregame. They didn't use him, did that they? Kid, that kid no. truly looks like the guy that could have made this game more interesting. He really has the moves. He's quick. You know, he does. And yet they waited till the eight, eight minutes left in the game for us to even see him. I, I don't know. I think that was that was not the way they should have went tonight. Fourth down and four yards to go for the Grenadiers. Six minutes left in the ball game. 35 to nothing. Red Tornadoes in the lead. 
Ooh. And they're going to go off sides. This will be an illegal procedure called against the Grenadiers. That will be a dandy. Fourth and four. Now it's fourth and nine. And they just, they just have not looked good offensively. They were not sharp. The line was manhandled throughout the entire game. And I, I, I just think they ran an odd version of, of what was the option. I really do. I don't think this was, it's not a true option, at least the parts we saw of it. And maybe they felt that was the game plan. Maybe they felt that Janusky would run wild right. on the corners. But certainly, after the first half, you would have said to yourself when you went into the locker room, this isn't working. But apparently they didn't say that. Janoski just on the straight drop back. Looks downfield on the fly. Double coverage. Shikitano and Gretzky break it up. Both of them. I don't know which one got their hand in there, but first down and 10 red tornadoes. I think Big Red's saying to themselves now, obviously, uh, let's preserve the shutout. You know, 35 nothing. I think I think the defense is saying, let's not let them score now. Now, what you will see if Coach Williams holds true to form is obviously you'll start to see some uh, cleaner uniforms enter the game. The five, it's five minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the football game. And, and Coach Williams is asking for a timeout, which he will get. But I believe he's about to take a whole new unit. Well, that's the way he does that's it. He always puts it. the varsity in. He always does that. He puts them in and then brings them out. And a good job by there the Red Tornadoes. Last standing ovation for many of the seniors here. And there it is. They're coming off the field. Coach Williams has pulled the entire starting unit. He brings out an entire, entirely new second unit, and I might include the bus, has entered the game. <laughs> All 48 passengers of them is in the game now at the 518 mark, and here you go. This is what we talked about. Now you brought all new kids in, many of them freshmen. They're mm, playing right. in an Eastern Conference championship, championship game. football game. And I'll tell you what, down the line next year, the year after, this kind of game, this is why you win a state championship. This is why you're in every year winning eight, nine, ten games. This is what does it right here. Well, in there for the Red Tornadoes right now. We'll work on it uh, at, at, in the back positions, 47 or 45. Ryan McGee, 47, 42. Mike Sinkovich. McGee does a good job up to the 50-yard line. Also in there, number 35, Brian Detry. Was in there, 75, John Els at center. 56, Gary Dunn. Also 65, Ricky Harris. 53, Clayton Casella. 21, Matt Montgomery. Number one, the quarterback, which is Mike Wytovich. 47, Steve Sinkovich comes into the game. Tell you what, this McGee kid, he really shows us a lot. Every time we see him, he is one hard-nosed football player. Second down and four yards to go. This one goes to Sinkovich off the right side. Good tackle made that time. Initial hit made by number 31, which is Joe Janik. So we'll see a third down and about three yards to go, number 67 into the game for the Red Tornadoes now, Jason Wytovich. And of course, if you're, if you're a coach from one of our teams and they're gonna play us next year, you just saw and said to yourself, oh my God, there are two Sinkovichs in the backfield at the same time. I mean, tell me you're not starting to get a little bit of scared about what's going on around here. Plus you're bringing Veach back, no less, and Costello. <laughs> third down and four, this one's the Cinco. Good tackle made that time from the left side of the Grenadier defensive line. And this will be a punting formation for the Red Tornadoes. And we're going to see a new punter. Well, 54 Jeff Evans kicked for the uh, JV games, and he's in to attempt the, uh, the punt right now. The bullet. We have a timeout. Or it's an official timeout. They're letting the center wipe his hands on, on the official's towel. Actually, back there, number one, Sean Coleman has been back to to, cat, to field all the punts. He's a good running back, and uh, and he's back again to field Jeff Evans' punt. It's the first time in the evening, ladies and gentlemen, the bullet is punting. Snaps back. Kicks away. Ooh. Good kick by... And Montgomery right down there with Coleman. I mean, just, just covering the ball. Good job by Montgomery to go down and cover that punt. Yeah, he's, he's a quick kid, Montgomery. He really is. Again, he's another, another player we've been watching throughout the year. He's, he's got a lot of potential, that guy. 
You'll see him in the defensive backfield, I'm sure, for, for the next couple of years. 75, John Ellis had to snap that. But I'll tell you what, when you're on the sidelines for three quarters and then you have to snap, oh, yeah. long snap one. Yeah, in the mud, yeah, you <laughs> say to yourself, how did I get in here? <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's no ball of fun, that's for sure. First down and 10 for the Grenadiers from about the 18-yard line. Red Tornado defense in the setup right now. You'll see the 65, Rick Harris. 37, Pete Avellino. Number 60, Jason Malakoski, the brother of Dan Malakoski. 75, John Else will be in the other right tackle. Also, 54, Jeff Evans, the bullet, will be at nose guard. 21, Matt Montgomery in the back. Also, uh, you'll see 45, Ryan McGee in there. 42 and 47, the both Sinkovich's, Steve and Mike, will be in there. And number 40 at the other end, and I think I got everybody, Damian Ziegler. Also 48, Krzyzewski will be in there. <laughs> 321 left in the Eastern Conference <laughs> Championship game. It's one of my one of my only fans down there, Cassandra Mace. Is, she's waving, she's waving at, at you. At yes, she's, I see that. She's two, and she's one of my only fans. So well, I gotta gotta keep her happy down there. Coleman now at tailback, and he must be a, a youngster coming up for the uh, for the GAR Grenadiers. Coleman goes in motion. Good play that time by Evans, and number 42 also in there. Uh, Sinkovich also on the tackle. 75, John Else in there. So good job that time. 71, Shoppy there. So good job by Red Tornado defense that time. This this 71, Shoppy, I'll tell you what. I look at this guy. We, we had him at, at supper. And I'll tell you what. Talking about an awesome guy. I'll tell you what. He gets in the weight room and comes out, and you know, in this next year, he is going to be one guy to contend with. He truly is. He's a big boy out there. He could, Two, be, a, he could be a building. 2.45 left on the clock. Janoski going out to the right side. Well, it's number 10, the quarterback. And good tackle made 54 Evans or 40. No, it's number 40, 40, 40 Ziegler, Ziegler and 47 there. Sinkovich in there. Heitzovich, 67, back in the ball game. I'll tell you what, you know, we've seen this defensive uh, lineup come in and out of the game several times you know over the, the, the course of the year i tell you what you don't run on them no you, know, you don't do anything with this group either so and in uh gr is having the same kind of problems they're down in five yards to go Ooh, coleman <laughs> with the number 42 sinkovich great job by mike sinkovich so oh hunting formation for the grenadiers at 149 left on the clock oh my <laughs> Sinkovich is a truly going to be an amazing group when they get going here next year. I saw it. we had the, the, the all generations because Joe is in the stands below us here. I saw him yeah. coming up with some coffees at <laughs> halftime, and, and nobody can forget the kind of runs that he made in his career here at Mount Carmel Air either. And these two guys are cut exactly from the same mold. Grenadiers are going for it. It's going to be a run. Which is oh, and they, they're just not a good backwards idea. with a big tackle from number 42, Mike Sinkovich. So Red Tornadoes take over first down and 10 with 110 left on the clock. That was not the play to run on that one, I don't think. Again, Big Red looks tough. The, the, the different unit out there really looks tough defensively. Great field position now. They take the ball over at the 13-yard well, line. Now you wonder if they're just going to down it, though. I'm, I'm they guessing they downs, would, you know. But, but you still. It's hard to tell a kid yeah, that if it's in the football right. game, though. You don't, you know. What do you tell them? Slow up. Don't do this. <laughs> the only way you control it is by calling running plays, you know, well, and up the middle running plays. They're going to down it. That's yeah. the way they're set up now. They're set up just to down the ball. And That's good. Whitevich downs the ball. That's a class act by Big Red. It really is. Coach Williams. I mean, the score is 35 nothing. GER has been beaten in every single phase of this football game that there was. I mean, there was no single thing they did really well tonight. They were stymied offensively. They were run over on defense. They were passed over. So, yeah, I think that was the smart move. Just just call it a day and, and, and uh, bring home an Eastern, an Eastern Conference championship. We'll have the trophy presentations, I guess, out at midfield. I believe it's been a while since we did what, this with Eastern what Conference. A but great, great performance by the Red Tornadoes. Unbelievable. What a great job by the Red Tornadoes. The clock's winding down. Five, four, three, two, one. 
That's the ball game. The score, the Red Tornadoes. 35, Wilkesbury GR Grenadier zero, and I'll tell you what, a very talented offense came down to the Silver Bowl and did nothing tonight, Warren. No, they, if they, they came down where they didn't nothing. get in the stadium is what happened. They drove down on the bus but didn't show up for the game. Uh, Mount Carmel area, truly a, a great cap, a great end to a fantastic season. I mean, really, you, you could not ask for better than this. This was really a, a, a good game, uh, tough game played by everybody. Right now, medals are being presented to the GAR Grenadiers on the sideline, and uh, a, a tough loss for the Grenadiers in that Warren, they, they're going to go back to Wilkesbury. They were they were talented. They felt they would come down here and really give the Red Tornadoes a game. The Red Tornadoes, on the other hand, are going to come out of this game and want to play next week. Oh yeah, you I know, mean, but. It, it, that's Obviously, not going to happen, that's the but, way it, works. but uh, it, it's, it is a boost for next year for this Red Tornado football team to come out winning the Eastern Conference Championship 35 to nothing. I mean, it was it, you won an Eastern Conference Championship, but you did so by demolishing the other yeah. team. So, I mean, it bodes well for the future. A lot of these kids, you know, these we only we only lose a couple of seniors. We're not losing much of the of the team senior wise. And again, we we want to say. You know, for the final time of these broadcasts, we take our hats off to those seniors and to everything they've, they've given us. I mean, they gave us a state championship last year. They gave us an Eastern Conference champion this year. There's not a whole lot more you can ask for here. You know, they've done the deeds. They've been out there, and, and, and they've made, and they, they've, more than anything else, they have continued what is a tradition unmatched anywhere else, Mount Carmel area football. I don't care where you go. I don't care what programs you're looking at. Look at the wins, you know, winning is in Pennsylvania, but fourth, fifth winning is in the nation now. This is it. This is what football is all about, and you get to come down to this state even see it, you know, five, six, seven, eight times a year. That's what it's all about. The 20